Good morning, afternoon or evening. Today I'll be looking at all of Germany's unique units and buildings in this historical analysis video and discussing their historical origins. I will start by covering Germany's involvement in World War I and II and then going into the game and starting at IR1, then moving on to IR2. If you want to see the other historical analysis videos of other war selection countries, check out the playlist that this video is in. Germany prior to World War I was only recently unified in 1871, and was in the process of setting itself up as a European power to contest France, Russia, etc. This was mostly done by Bismarck, who was the ch current Chancellor of Germany at the time. He controlled the foreign policy and focused on keeping Germany at peace. The country worked with a monarch, but also a chancellor and a constitution, but the monarch held the most power, being able to pick a new chancellor whenever they wanted. Germany in the 19th century had become a huge empire with colonies in Africa and Asia, most notably. Germany was producing two times as much steel as Britain. Before then, Britain was the largest exporter of industrial goods for the last 100 years. And also, Germany had become one of the strongest land forces, leading to growing tensions over a war in Europe. By 1914, Germany held a very large portion of land for itself in Western and East and Central Europe. It had alliances with Austro-Hungary since 1879 and the Ottoman Empire since 1914, which helped it during the war. By the 1930s, with Hitler becoming the new Chancellor of Germany in 1933, Germany wasn't in a good state. It had a devastated economy from the Great Depression and war reparations it had to pay to the victors of World War I, which Germany lost. It also had a very weak army as the Treaty of Versailles had limited their army greatly, with Hitler coming to power him and his Nazi party made Germany a strong military and economic country for the Second World War in 1939. He did this through many means, such as producing tractors when he was actually making tank chassis and training soldiers and weapons in the Soviet Union to avoid detection by Allied inspectors. All of this led to Germany slowly but surely making a strong economy and army. Germany in-game from IR1 has the unique mechanic which means that many of its units and buildings are very expensive such as houses and factories. This is to reflect on the German doctrine of quality over quantity, especially in World War II where the Germans made very complex and expensive tanks, planes and other equipment leading to high quality over low IR1 Germany uses great anti-infantry with flamethrowers and using their heavy artillery such as Berthas, much like in World War I, when the German artillery was used to destroy fortifications such as the Maginot. In 1912, the German factory Krupp designed an artillery gun good, good to break the defensive formations of Belgium and France. Its name was nicknamed Big Bertha, given to it after it was first used in combat. It had a 42 cm cannon, making it one of the largest ever used. It was also used in World War I between 1914 and 1918. The gun could fire 8 shells an hour, dealing huge amounts of damage and being effective in breaking forts in Belgium and France. In game, the Big Bertha is a long range, low fire rate, high damage and low speed cannon. It is also one of the most armoured artillery units in the game, making it great in an early IR1, where many units just can't kill it. But it is an expensive unit, it takes a lot of time to build from the also expensive factories. But the Bertha can be constructed by engineers in the field for a higher price. Due to the trenches and the stalemate of World War I, Germany invented the first portable flamethrowers, which were used to clear trenches. The weapon was operated by two soldiers, one carrying the fuel and propellant, and the other carrying the actual weapon. They were not very effective as they were a big target for snipers, and also didn't have much range. Most use of flamethrowers is in urban conflicts such as the Warsaw Uprising in 1944 and other cities until the end of the wars. In game, the Flammenwerfer is a weak unit in World IR1 because of its lack of armour and its slow movement speed, but it can mostly one shot all infantry in the game. But in IR2, you unlock the ability to upgrade the Flammenwerfers into armoured Flammenwerfers, which are immune to most bullets from units such as soldiers, SMGs, etc. This makes them great for sneaking into the enemy base and killing unsuspected workers or in the use against Chinese uh, units which are mostly melee. Prior to World War II, Germany built an extensive defensive network of bunkers and forts called the Secret Line or the West Wall. Stretching from the Swiss border up to the Netherlands, they also constructed the Atlantic Wall from the Spanish border until the northernmost part of Norway to stop Allied invasions. They did this by the use of heavy bunkers called pillboxes, which were concrete bunkers which could withstand small artillery fire and most handheld weapons such as grenades. 
These were mounted with machine guns and cannons to name a few. In game, the pillbox is used in IR2 as a defensive structure, which can be built like towers with a machine gun to start with, but can also be upgraded to have a cannon, which can be used against more armoured targets, and an anti-aircraft gun machine gun, which can be used against air units. Both versions retain their base machine gun also, making them a great defence as it has high health and good weapons. The Panther tank was a German medium tank in World War II, produced from 1943 until 1945. It was mostly used on the Eastern Front and in the Western Front after D-Day. The Panther had a 75mm cannon and around 100mm of armour in its highest in the front and as low as 16mm in other exposed areas. Over 6,000 Panthers were produced and used to counter the Soviet T-34 on the Eastern Front. It was a stereotypical German tank, being very effective in the later stages of design, but often having issues traversing the terrain in the Eastern Front and the usual transmission issues. It was also very expensive and took over 2,000 man-hours to construct. In-game, it is a tank with good armour and health and good damage, but it isn't very fast and is very expensive, making it mostly not used, but still being an option when trying to snipe an enemy player's town hall or trying to counter enemy tanks. The Goliath Tracked Mine is an unmanned ground vehicle which was loaded with around 60 to 100 kilograms of explosives and driven into enemy formations or buildings to demolish them. This was used by Germany in World War II between 1942 and 1945 to limited effectiveness. Over 7,500 were constructed, but because they used a long cable to be operated remotely and the low speed of 6 km an hour made them susceptible to losing control as the cable is severed by artillery fire around the area. But if they did reach their target, the damage was very extensive and effective. In game, this unit is the Goliath and is spawned from the Goliath Operator, which is a truck which moves at a fast speed with low armor and no combat capabilities. The Goliath in game is a single use explosive that you can control and it explodes upon reaching a target or reaching its life max lifespan. The use of this unit is rare as it is quite expensive, but deals high damage to tanks and grouped units. The Mouse Tank was designed from 1941 and produced in 1944 for the first time, with two units being built, one without a turret and only a chassis, and one with a fully functioning turret. This is the heaviest tank ever produced, which meant it couldn't cross any bridges, forcing it to ford them. The way it did this was by equipping a snorkel to one tank, and the other would provide power to it through a cable as it drove on the bottom of the river. With a 128mm gun and a secondary 75mm cannon, this tank could pierce any tank at the time, and some from over 3km away. It never saw combat and was eventually scrapped to avoid capture, but it was rebuilt after the war and is stored in a museum in Russia. In-game, this is one of the heaviest armoured units and most expensive units in the game, meaning its uses are limited. It is exposed to high amounts of artillery fire, as it can only fire at a slow rate to defend itself, so sending it alone is not possible. The tank has the highest damage of any tank, and is good at attacking fortifications when supported correctly, against such things as Turkish mortars, being repaired by engineers and supported by other artillery such as berthers. The ME-262 is the first jet-powered operational fighter plane. At its time of production 1944, it had claimed around 500 Allied planes downed, with 1,400 built, due, but due to poor implementation and shortages of fuel and materials, it wasn't used early enough in the war. It was near unstoppable in the air due to its speed, but it was counted on the ground where it was vulnerable. Due to its high-speed Allied fighters and bombers, gunners couldn't effectively target it, while the ME-262 could target them with its twin 30mm cannons. In-game, this unit is the fastest unit in-game and is armed with a cannon which can attack air and ground units. It is very effective in groups of five or more, but it is also very expensive and can be shot down quite easily, making it a hard unit to use effectively. Last but not least, the Paris gun is a huge cannon that was used and built in World War I. It was used to shell Paris, hence the name, but due to its poor accuracy, high cost and low payload, it wasn't effective. It was meant to cause psychological damage, not destroy Paris, and another issue was that its barrel needed to be replaced a lot due to the huge shells wearing away the rifling of its barrel. In-game, the gun is an accurate, high damage and surprisingly fast reload cannon. It is let down by its insane price tag and the vulnerability of the cannon with low health and armour, making it a great target for planes, but it can be used effectively to snipe enemy town halls from a very long distance. I believe it is in in IR2 because otherwise in IR1 you wouldn't be able to afford it and also 
it will be quite powerful with the limited amount of planes you can use to counter it. With that last unit for Germany covered, that is the end of the analysis for Germany. I hope this gave you all some information on the units in the game and where they are from. I could go into a lot more detail about them, but the video would never end. So with that, if you want to suggest the next country to cover, let me know what you want to see. And thank you for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, and goodbye.